Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. So Joe Budden um, was talking about Megan Thee Stallion and Evelyn Lozado. And here's what he had to say. Yeah, Johnson, Ocho Cinco's ex-wife. Mm -hmm. He's in a whole new relationship. He's married. Mm -hmm. he's, he's whatever he is, he's happy. Mm -hmm. They happy, she's happy. Um, for years, any anytime his name came up, she popped up. It had nothing to do with her, but she popped up and said, hey, he did this. It didn't matter the uh, rehabilitation he'd done. It didn't matter mm -hmm. the, the changes that he's made, the apologies, both public and private. Yo, dog, for the next seven, eight, nine, ten years, every time I do something positive, you're going to pop up with this victim story. And you are the victim. So I don't take that away. But that's bullying. Now, Joe Budden was comparing Evelyn Lozada from Basketball Wives. Evelyn had a situation with Ocho Cinco like 12 years ago. Um, but basically, the reason why he's mentioning that situation, because, you know, Evelyn sometimes in interviews does bring up Ocho Cinco, whether it's good or bad. And so he's basically trying to say that, you know, Megan Thee Stallion interview um, that she did, um, she was kind of bullying Tory Lanez. That's how he feels. That's what I took it as. Um, because in the end, he mentions how, like, if you keep repeating something, even if it happened years ago, um, you're trying to bully that person. Um, do I feel like it was necessarily bullying? Not really. I kind of feel like, um, Joe Budden should have never really mentioned, um, Evelyn, and I also feel like Joe actually should not be speaking on this topic only because you have allegations against you for allegedly putting hands on women. Okay. So of course you're going to side with Tori and Ocho Cinco, especially when you got a lot of skeletons in your closet and it's really no shade, but multiple women have come out and said that you put hands on them. So I really don't feel like you should be the person to really talk about any type of domestic situations or, you know, women being the victim of some sort of um, abuse. But I don't feel like um, Megan Thee Stallion doing the interview was a smart idea because now people see it as somebody that's trying to gain something. Um, or trying to prove a point to the general public versus letting the courts handle it. Um, so I just don't feel like it was a smart move, whether her team told her to do it or not. They don't really have her best interest at heart. Okay. Because it's all about making money off of Megan Thee Stallion. Rock Nation really don't give a fuck about Megan. Um, on top of that, she is no longer a part of the legendary show. OK, now, if you don't know what the legendary show is, um, it's basically a competition show for like dancing, voguing and fashion. And Megan Thee Stallion was a judge on that show, um, but she is being replaced by Kiki Palmer. Now, I never watched the show, so let me know if you guys have and if it's good. There has been no answer as to why she was replaced on the show. Moving on to Cardi B and Kanye West. Where is the song? Remember Kanye and Cardi B um, were supposed to do a record together. It was announced and it was for Balenciaga. Is the song scrapped? What happened? You know, because Kanye do stuff like that last minute where he don't want to put out a song. Or he wants to go in a different direction. Um, so maybe he decided not to put out the collaboration with Cardi B. I did hear that it might have been scrapped, but actually I think that she's saving it for her album. I think once the album drops, she might put the Kanye feature on there because, you know, from what I hear, she's supposed to have some really big artists on her album. So I actually feel like this is a chess move. But I did hear it got scrapped, but I just kind of feel like Atlantic is not going to allow Kanye to do that, okay? Especially since it's already been revealed to the public that they have a record together. So it's going to be kind of embarrassing if it does get scrapped. So we just got to wait and see. If it don't come out this year, they can forget about it.
Okay, because I know the record ain't going to be that great. So if it don't come out by the end of 2022, you should just let it be in the stash. I'm definitely not interested in hearing it in 2023. The queen of pop, okay, um, wants to work with Dolce Cat. So let me know how you guys feel about that. Now, here's my thing. I like the Queen of Pop, but I just feel like we don't care about Queen of Pop's music like that no more. I mean, the classics are there, but I'm talking about any new music she really don't need to do. Um, You know, I feel like when the Queen of Pop collaborated with, you know, Nicki Minaj, it was unnecessary. I feel like sometimes she tries to latch on to the younger artists for some sort of clout, okay? Because even though she is a legend and icon, Nobody cares about the new music, you know, the Queen of Pop is putting out. People listen to more of, you know, the older classic songs that are, you know, timeless. And a lot of people want to work with Dolja Cat because they see that she's popping. But Dolja Cat doesn't do that great when it comes to collaborations. Um, It usually flops. No shade to Dolja Cat, but, you know, that Tiger collaboration, nobody cares about. The French Montana collaboration, nobody cares about. You know, Doja Cat is just doing a bunch of collaborations that are really not going to be beneficial for her. And I feel like eventually she's going to oversaturate and then people are just going to be tired of her. Okay? She should just focus on solo music because that's what she does best in. And it's really no shade. Moving on to Erica Banks. Erica Banks was dissed in that Kona Lisa We Go Up freestyle. Kona Lisa killed it. It's her, Brittany F. Taylor, and Akbar V. That really did, um, you know, a great job when it comes to the We Go Up freestyle. And I noticed one thing about Erica Banks. Um, she's so busy talking about Nicki Minaj. How come she hasn't addressed Kona Lisa? Kona Lisa been taking shots at Erica Banks for almost a couple months now. And at first, I ignored it, but Erica Banks, you got to respond, okay? You're not bigger than Kona Lisa. Y'all on the same level. She can go to the EBT Awards just like you, okay? Um, So I feel like you guys need to address each other, and you need to send her some bars, okay? And I hope you're sending some shots on the We Go Up freestyle, okay? You need to address Koi. Bia and Kona Lisa, don't just address Koi, because I already know you got some bars for her in the stash. You need to address Kona Lisa too, because she can spit. Moving on to Sweetie. So I am hearing that Sweetie is going to be getting into her acting bag. Okay, we might see Sweetie on the big or small screen. Um, And I'm okay with that. I like Sweetie uh, when it comes to her marketing skills. I just don't believe Sweetie belongs on the mic. I don't think that she should be a rapper. She's not talented enough to be a rapper. And this is why rap is dying now because, you know, people are not gatekeeping rap anymore. A lot of the OGs are so busy focusing on trying to smash these young women or making money that they're not really focusing on talent. Because Sweetie should not be a rapper. She should not be nominated for anything unless it's for a best brand ambassador. Okay. But other than that, um, I don't feel like she should really be rapping. And I think a lot of people try to force Sweetie on us, but the people not here for Sweetie and it shows because her singles have been flopping. So, you know, marketing, movies, television, um, I'm okay with Sweetie doing. Stay away from the mic, okay? Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and have an amazing day.